to see a kid get a second chance is worth it. Knowing that, that that's going to be a juncture in their life, most likely that's going to change the course of their entire life and their families, maybe. It worked. It, it, it's beautiful. Is that why you do it? Oh, man, to give back. Just to give back, to watch the smile. I'm happy to see you happy. So we're just starting this right now. Wallace or Wally Moore, the inimitable, the the legend, the Los Angeles legend, Wally Moore. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So you're Thanks wearing a. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. You're 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 wearing a Drew League uh, shirt. Let's talk a little bit about Drew League. You are a you are a bastion, a foundation of Drew League. You've had some incredible moments within Drew League itself. Tell me about some of those. Absolutely, I've been in Drew League. I think uh, coming up be my 15th year. Yep. And out of 15 years, four championships. Yeah, four champions. And you, you've you watched that the Drew League grow, and you've built your legend in Drew League at the same time. It's In fact, I would say they're intertwined in a way. They're almost indivisible from each other. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Drew, Drew League is, uh, is family-orientated, community-orientated. Yeah. And uh, shout-out to Chanel and uh, Dino. They do an amazing job. The kitchen. It's just, it's just a beautiful atmosphere for young kids and young adults and seniors that can come out and watch some good basketball. When you talk about the kitchen, I'm going to ask you to move your mic a little closer too. When you talk about the kitchen, what do you mean by the kitchen for, for people who aren't from Southern California don't know about Drew League? Well, they have a kitchen where they have all this beautiful food. At. That's they rough, have, man. Yeah. yeah, they have a special Drew Aid. Yeah, they can't. They runs out of that. Have they so. told you what's in the Drew Because it feels like they won't it, tell it, you. No, it's they a secret concoction. They won't tell you. It's like they growing up, my grandpa made Kool Aid with like four or five different kind of. Yeah, they won't called tell a monster. You. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> they ain't gonna tell you nothing about that. Yeah, but it's magical. It's special. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's um, it's a legend. It's a legend. So coaching there, four championships, but even one chip, one game, the energy, the excitement, the the location, the core. There are people on the court while you're coaching. It's wild, man. Yeah, it is. It's it's a, a hell of experience. Thank you, uh, Coach Kelly. Kelly and uh, his son Marcus Williams. They played in the NBA. They called me out, and Marcus asked me to uh, coach with his dad. Actually, I was uh, doing a program called Say No yeah. Classic. Yep. With Rod let's talk Smith. about that Say No Classic. Let's talk. A little yeah, bit. I, I was there. Um, I actually won six championships in Say No. The last four championships Say No existed. The last four years. I'm sorry. I won those last four. I had some amazing kids. For the people listening, I think I told you he was a legend. We'll just get into it. He just dropped some ten, knowledge. Ten summer league championships. We're talking about, I mean, we're talking ten. about some. Ten summer league the, championships. But what's, in what's, Los Angeles. It's in not, Los like San- a, not like in Podunk, Indiana, where no, no, I'm no. from. It's amazing because six championships, the last four championships in Say No Classic. And I'll never forget this story. Coach Tiny, shout out to Coach Tiny. He was in the Drew League, been there about 10 years. Yeah. I'm in my first Drew League meeting. Yeah. I ain't played in the Drew yet. I ain't coached, not one game. We had a meeting. Were you nervous about that? Were you? No, 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 no. I'm coming off of four championships. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And on the college level, though. And uh, Coach Tiny looked down and said, hey, man, uh, I've been here 10 years. And I ain't never won one. This ain't like college. I say, well, Coach Tiny, I ain't you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was three championships later because I won three straight. When I first started hearing about this dude, Wally, man, all I heard about was he'd tell us exactly like it is. And he, but but you, what you say is true and you can back it up, which you do. Which 100%. You can back, yeah, 100%. Man, <laughs> so were you there the game that Kobe came down, played against DeMar DeRozan, and was Harden, and, and was a Kyrie? Who was it? It was Harden against Kobe. Yeah. Now, this is crazy. You ready? Yeah, I, yeah come on. Man. I was the coach. No, <laughs> no, no. Don't make me pull my phone out. I pulled the phone out. I was the Are coach. you serious? I was the coach. Of Kobe's game. team? Kobe's team. I so the they start talking about the fact that this brother can go off, like, you know, they're going to win the game. Uh, everyone started went down talking, to the last shot, but but everyone started thinking. Okay, Kobe. Everyone started thinking about Kobe. You should get out of here since the they, they got the police ready. He wouldn't else, go, and he wouldn't go. They wouldn't. And he hit the game winning shot. It was beautiful. Confirm it or not, he he hit the game winning shot, and then he stood there in the center court with his arms stretched out. And everybody out. grabbed him. Security tried to stop. He said, "No, leave him alone." Oh man, yeah, that's me coaching Kobe. That's me with the blue hat. Oh, on. can I show this? If yeah. you can see that right there. Oh my God! We'll, we'll zoom in on this. I'm gonna try to hold it straight. That's that's right on my face. You know, Kobe. You know what he told me? What he I told say, you? Kobe, come here and tell you, you ain't Phil Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe's such amazing. He was so amazing. Man. He if, was so amazing. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna show this one too. Yeah, he was so amazing. So, 
Tell me two things that you, you you say is amazing, specifically two things about him, even in, in that short time. Well, what he did was he was uh, hands on. He didn't let security stop people from coming around him. He embraced the crowd. He, he wanted to be Black Jesus after Jordan, didn't he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He let the kids hug him. He gave him shoes. He did? He threw them in the air. You know, it was, a, it was, it was fascinating it was to watch awesome. Kobe mature as a young man who was very self-centered and somebody who was... And self-centered, rightfully so, you get it, because, I mean, he had to be focused, and so I'm not, no aspersions, but to become a man of the people and a man of Los Angeles, man, right, he had to earn that because he had, he had magic right behind him, Kareem right behind him, he had to live up to that. But what I love about Kobe, when he did events, yeah. he was hands-on. He did. Yeah, he didn't He didn't space himself and do all this security stuff and is, is act the, like he was better than you. Does that he happen sometimes? When, oh, man, yeah. Well, talk yeah. about that. So the, the, so the culture sometimes of these events is, you you have your security. You you know you might drop in for a second and just show your face, but other than that, you're not touching it. Right? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. I love the Drew, man. I love Drew. I also love West Coast Elite too. So now. we're we're gonna get to West Coast Elite in a minute. But I want to talk a little bit more, more about Drew. So that game that Kobe came down to, did you know he was coming? Yes. Uh, the coaches knew they were coming. But okay. None of the fans. They kind of tweeted it out a little bit. It was jam. It was beautiful. So Harden was there. Kobe they went, was there. They went neck and neck. You and know, James DeRozan Harden actually played with me for a year. Harden did too, but pre-beard. No, with his beard. The last time I won a championship was 2015. Okay. And James Harden was there. <laughs> and he he helped me. He got one. He didn't come back, though. Uh, that's all, but that's all he needed. That's what he said. I just wanted to get one. He wanted to come down to and get and, one. And what's so beautiful about that is I had that video. You have the video? Oh, do I? Oh yeah, man, right. you have that on, or share with me, or just show it to me, or don't, or just tell me that. I whatever had you want. that video. You have the video. I had that video. It was jam packed. We was playing against Nick Young and jam packed. Swaggy P, other people know. Swaggy P. Oh okay. man, it was jam. It was standing room only. It was crazy. What year was this? 2015. And it was just cacophonous sound. It I was, mean, to, to see Drew League video, it looks like there's no place to play because. Everyone's on the court. They're engaged. The energy is it's got to be. It's, it's got to be. Insane. And the fans, man, man, the fans, the kids, the, the the seniors. Everybody comes out. Like I said, it's family orientated. And and Dino and bless his heart and his wife, bless his heart, wherever they're and Chanel. Shout out to you. But they just right there. They just with the. They just. With the community. That's what makes it so beautiful. Would you rival to something like Rucker Park in terms of like the energy around it? I've been there. <laughs> you know what's funny about uh, 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 Rutgers when you go out there? Well, what's funny is we're at six fifteen. I mean, we we're at five forty-five. We only have fourteen minutes left at most. Yeah. This is going to be a. This might be an entire. But we're talking about Rutgers though. Okay. So we go out there. Yeah. Now, mind you, in New York City, you playing outside. Yeah. So while you playing outside, it's the projects like way right over there. there. Yeah. But watch this. The kids are on top of the roof, throwing rocks down. <laughs> So how right. how you very mean, you, New York You go to make 11. Hey, <laughs> you know, we couldn't figure out for like a half where it was coming from. Then somebody said, oh, they up there. Up there. Oh, I said, okay. <laughs> that's very, they stopped. Oh, it was crazy. It was, it was you don't do that at Drew League. No, no, that's no. Record no. Park style. Yeah, that's Park style. Oh, yeah. So. so if you could compare the two, not that you should. I'm not trying to start some new East Coast, West Coast beef, but between Record Park and Drew League. Well, well, for New York, that's a big event for them. So yeah. it means a lot to them. Um, but with Drew League, uh, is ongoing. Yeah. On and off the court. Uh, what do you mean by that? For people who don't know. So it's, it's ongoing, meaning on and off the court, even during off season is study things going on. Uh, you know, they're embracing this and they're supporting others yep. in the community, what they do. That's what I love about Dino and Chanel and them. They support others. So... It's year round. Drew League is in Los Angeles. Where does it take place? No, it, it's it's at King Drew High School now, but yep. it's not year round. Yep. It, it goes from like. Uh, but you're saying there's May. things happening all year. Round. Yeah, uh, yeah, and they're so very supportive. But the season takes place in the summer. Oh man, it's awesome. So, you've had. I mean, Kyrie came down with last year, two years ago. Who? <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> I don't know if I should say that again. Is he it? said Kyrie. Kyrie Irving. Yeah, he played with soldiers last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he played a game. So it draws down everybody. I mean, some yeah. of the, the, the greatest players in the Ty, history. Tyree Hollenbecker. Yeah. Halliburton. One, this sort of, he played with me. 
When he came Halliburton to the jury, was me. He was with me. So Halliburton, Bless his life. They're so they're talking about all the Halliburton, like he has this shot, no one thinks it's great, this whack shot, but that dude's burning up in the NBA, man. Come on, man. So was he, is he just like non-obvious good? Did he get better? Like, did you, do you see his game and think, yeah, he's got skill? He's just a great kid. See, you have to understand on that level, yeah. you have critics. Right. On that level. So he's going to get bashed this way. But guess what? That money's all right, right? <laughs> Somebody right. sees something. Somebody and sees then a lot one of thing about basketball is statistics. It's yep. stats. Yep. So I don't got to see you. Just let me see your stats. And by the way, Pacers are blowing up this year, man. I Come mean, on, man. Yeah, he's, Come on, he's no man. joke. So can you, not that I'm demanding that you do, but is there somebody that you would say was the best player you ever coached in Drew League? Was it be Kobe? No, in, actually, in, in this, this, this finna get crazy. So... You got J.R. Ryder. Yep. You got... Talk about J.R. Ryder a little bit before people... Some people don't might not remember who J.R. Ryder was. Well, he played in the NBA and he was... UNLV those, as well? Yeah, he's one of those guys that come off the bench and get all these buckets. You know, they had him. They had uh, the guy from the Clippers that went to Fresno State. Um, uh, what's the Clipper guy? Um, he starts for the Clippers forward. Um, um, not Kawhi. Not Kawhi, uh, the Clipper guy. He plays with him now. Been there three, four years. Oh, uh, my son would just my son would just went to he went to Fresno State. We're gonna have to. Okay, hold on. It's all good. Yeah. Um, Keep going. I'll, we're, we're gonna jump into it. Uh, yeah, but he had him. They had like four um, all stars on their team playing in the championship against us. Okay, and we had overseas Paul George, guys. Paul George. Yeah, you got Paul George, Jr. Uh, Smith, you got um, not J.R. Ryder, J.R. Ryder. J.R. Ryder, I'm sorry. Then you got um, Walls, John Wall. John Wall. They're all playing in the championship against me. Wait, J.R. Smith, John Wall, and Paul George are all playing against him? On the same team, but watch this. The, 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 what year was this? I think it was 2013. All right. Or something like that. But five guys you got Scott Cudley, Bobby Brown. Not the Whitney Houston, uh, don't no, be no, cool no. Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown, Bobo, Big Lurch, he was a Hamilton, and Marcus Williams. Okay. They beat him. They beat all the monsters by themselves. I would never forget that game. That was the most memorable game I ever saw. Was it chemistry? Was it coaching? Was it tenacity? They were just amazing. They played together, and every position was awesome. That Bobby Brown can shoot. That Marcus had an eye. Man, he can play. Knew the game. How was that to coach that? You can't. You you couldn't coach him. You just have to watch him. When they came on the sideline, they really spoke. It yep. was the energy was amazing. The atmosphere. I got one game where I just threw both hands up. It was just so beautiful, man. I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> when you win a championship in the Drew, you are the man. Okay? Really? Oh man, just imagine three straight. I imagine four straight. No, not four, but three. Yeah. Oh, three straight. Four total, three straight. Three straight. Back to back. Dynasty. To back. Three P. Back to back to back. Man. It was just it's it's un it's un unreal. unreal. That's gotta be incredible. And you're watching some of the all time great NBA players, which means some of the all time greatest players in the history of basketball. You're coaching them. Yeah. Kevin Durant came down and played. How was that to see him? It was amazing. Remember the lockout? Of course. We went up to Washington and, and the Drew League went up there and played them. They beat us up there, but we got them back at home. But when I tell you Washington loves basketball, when I tell you the fire marshals had to come, it was 300 people outside and 1,000 inside. Sounds like a P. Diddy uh, You know what I'm saying? Concert. It was crazy. Oh, man. It was crazy. That basketball is in the city and, and the fans and the and I, have, I just have to say the, the whole community is amazing. It's so amazing. So I know that you have to go in six to seven minutes. So I'm going to ask you what you're doing here. We're here at Beach Bonanza 2023 Thanksgiving weekend in uh, Mir at Mira Costa High School in Los Angeles. Right. A and uh, you are here with West Coast Elite. You, you work with and for Yeah, I've been there 10 years. And what do you do? Just so because I've heard a lot of things Juco, about Juco, Juco. Well, I'm, wherever I'm needed, but my specialty is the college players. What does we that just, mean? We just have host. You know, they have a uh, summer after they get out of college. Not a, after the season's over, they play in a JUCO All American game. Okay. Try to get scholarships. Last year, we sent six kids to Division One. Six kids. Right out of our tournament we had in Phoenix. That had to be incredibly. No, cool. no, they go to school, man. They get scholarships to see a kid get a second chance. 
is worth it. Knowing that, that that's going to be a juncture in their life, most likely that's going to change the course of their entire life and their families, maybe. It worked. It, it, it's beautiful. Is that why you do it? Oh, man, to give back. Just to give back, to watch the smile. I'm happy to see you happy. Have you always been like that? Because that's a very selfless, very you know, Buddhist, very wise. I mean, there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of cultures of giving back, so I don't mean to isolate Buddhism, but like the, the notion of you're happy if someone else is is pro, uh, most beautiful feeling you can ever get. Were you always see that somebody way? Smile. Been, yeah. Always been like that. I, I'm happy to see you happy. If I can bring something and make you smile, you made my day. In this world, in this world of American consumerism, laissez-faire capitalism. How how is that mentality, that approach to living, able to succeed? Because most people, not most people, there are people who are, quote unquote, or maybe people who are financially successful or successful in business, uh, commingled with financial success, who might say you got to be as tenacious and as self-centered as possible. But you're you're talking the exact opposite, right? You just you just have to be who you are. You have to just live each and every day like there's no tomorrow. Were you born? So you were born with a given spirit. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, a, a nice soul. You have to love people. It don't matter who they are. Just love them, embrace them. I, I don't care who they are. I, I love camps, little camps we go. The kids can play. Some of them can, some of them can't. I love the ones that's trying. I give them hugs, throw them up, basketball, bring them on the court. You have to do that. You put life into them. You actually give them a second chance. You give them life because real quick the kids. They go through so much. You'll never know what they go through at school. They're being bullied. Right, right. They're going through so much. We never pay attention to that because we got so much going on in our life. But if we take the time out for other people and just imagine what they are going through and then make it about them in that five minutes, you give them breath air. You you wouldn't even believe it. You wouldn't even believe it. Now I'm starting to understand. I'm starting to witness firsthand why you are such a legend in Los Angeles in the basketball community. Come on, man. You have to give back. From your heart, your soul. It don't even have to be finance. It can be a, sh- a handshake, a smile. So you you work with West Coast Elite. There's this, this summer league you're talking about, the JUCO game. Yeah, all American game. All American yeah. game. But you said you also said you go where you're needed. What does that mean? Wherever they need me to, like here tonight, I, I came to support. Wherever I'm needed, I'm in there. Uh, I love Ryan Silver. I love the whole team. Shout out Ryan to- Silver is the, the founder of West Coast Elite. Yeah, and shout out to Frosty. We just buried him. Uh, I love you, Frosty. He was a just a West Coast elite guy, and he just recently passed. We all was at the funeral. The uh, West Coast elite team is is unbelievable. You mean the, the basketball team, or you mean the administrative team? The team? administrative team is amazing. Why do you say that? Because how the, the growth happened. They started small. Nobody believed in them. Uh, now you, they in, quote me if I'm wrong, maybe twenty to twenty five states, from 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 a little corner in Manhattan Beach. To 25 states. That's hard work. Putting hundreds of kids. That's through. hard work. That's hard work. That's hard work. And you get your blessings. Is that why you buy them? Because of what they've built or what they enable you to do or what you can enable them to do? Because they give back. They, they they have the same soul as me. They give back. No big me, little you. No, you know what I'm saying? They don't turn their back on all nationality. That's what I love them so much. On all, They have to take, they have to take some criticism. You know, you take criticism, but you keep striving to be in New York. That's why you're successful. And I love it. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. West Coast Elite, for real, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. That's beautiful. I'm telling you. I know you have to go. Yeah. I'm going to ask one favor of you. That yeah. you come back and talk to me some other time. We could Because we just, just grad- I have Drew League questions that are probably, I don't know, seven Give me one. Give deep. me one. Give me one. Give me one. Watching Kobe, I just, I mean, Kobe alone could be an episode, but watching Kobe play, could you tell that he was different? I know he was a pro then. He'd already won championships. What was it about him that was so special in those moments? Because he because he played hard. He Even in that league. Yeah, in that league. He didn't come, no, because you He gonna, came to win. He listen, had the game-winning shot. If you go light, you get clowned. He wasn't <laughs> getting clowned. You don't want to get clowned. He ain't getting clowned. If there's one place you don't want to get clowned is with that that audience. You ain't getting clowned. Right. And the guys that you're playing against, you give them a chance of a lifetime. I'm guarding Kobe. If right. I can give them a bucket, I can. They'll tell that story for the rest of their life. What? I stole the ball one time. No, they're going to video it and put it on, <laughs> on every social media That's they right. can. And every date they have, everything else. Now, they had some some pros come in and failed. Like? Uh, I ain't going to do it like yeah, that. I was gonna say, but they you... failed. 
I couldn't buy, couldn't make a shot. They right. failed. Right. Is and boy, ooh, and you, they let them have it. Would too. you say that it's more pressurized than a, an average pro game in terms of the pressure about knowing you can't fail the Drew in, front, in front of those people? It's the Drew League. <laughs> yeah, you can't uh, fail. people, man. Some of them come and they win. They don't come back because they don't want to lose. <laughs> leave <laughs> they on don't want to lose. Right. Leave right. on top. Right, right. That's how it goes. Okay, we're going to leave on top now because I know you have to go. I thank you so much for your time. And I appreciate you. Wally, man, it's great meeting you. I'm, I'm going to run you down again. We'll do some more. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. All the best to you. And thank you for all that you're doing. I've heard about your legend from a lot of different people. Um, it's incredible. It really is. Ten summer league championship. More Ten. Than, a lot more than that. <laughs> Ten summer league. That's the, that's the tip of the iceberg. There you go. Thank you. All right, thank you.